time to talk business. I am Kelly Egiga. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, says Nigeria plans to bring down its debt service to revenue ratio to 60% this year. In 2022, Nigeria's debt service to revenue ratio was at 80.6%, far above the World Bank suggested 22.5% for low-income countries like Nigeria. Mrs. Ahmed, speaking on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Davos, said Nigeria plans to cut its revenue spending on debt servicing to 60% in 2023, adding that the current ratio is not sustainable. Meanwhile, the International Monetary Fund, that's the IMF, has revealed that Nigeria may spend almost 100% of its revenue on debt servicing by 2026. However, the minister says the country's debt trajectory is sustainable. The Federation Accounts Allocation Committee says it shared 990.189 billion naira among the three tiers of government in December 2022. This represents an increase of 88.136 billion naira compared to the 902.053 billion naira shared in November. The FAC in the communique disclosed that the federal government re received 375.306 billion naira, while states received 299.557 billion naira, while local governments in the country got 22. 221.807 billion naira. The total distributable revenue comprised statutory revenue, value added tax, VAT, exchange gain, and electronic money transfer levies. It also added that oil producing states received 93.519 billion naira as a 13% derivation for mineral revenue in the same month. To other stories now, Director of Legal Services, Department of the Central Bank of Nigeria, that's the Apex Bank, Mr. Kofo Salamalade, says the agency will go tough on banks that continue to fill their automated teller machines with old narrow notes as a deadline to face out the notes near. He said the CBN is already monitoring banks that are still dispensing old narrow notes from their ATMs. So speaking during a sensitization event of the new narrow notes here in Lagos, Mr. Salam Alade said the withdrawal of new notes over the counter was stopped to ensure that everyone can have access to the new notes. What appears to be one of his parting gifts to Nigerians as his administration winds down on May 29 this year, President Mohamed Buhari has given approval to the recommendation for the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited to invest 1.9 trailer narrow the reconstruction of 44 federal roads under the tax credit policy. The approval was given during the Federal Executive Council meeting held at the presidential villa and presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshibaju. The spokesman to the Vice President, Mr. Laolua Konde, briefed State House correspondent on behalf of the Minister of Works and Housing. The Federal Executive Council approved the recommendations to invest in the reconstruction the selected federal roads under the Federal Government Road Infrastructure Development and Refurbishment Investment Tax, a credit policy phase two by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC Limited, and its subsidiaries. According to Mr. Konde, the Council approved the proposal by the Ministry of Works and Housing for the reconstruction of 44 proposed federal roads with a total length of 4,554 kilometers and a total sum of 1.9 trillion naira. The approval is coming 15 months after the National Oil Company expressed interest to invest in the reconstruction of selected roads in order to sustain a smooth supply and distribution of petroleum products across the country. President Buhari had on January 25, 2019, signed the Executive Order 007, which was the instrument that brought about the Road Infrastructure Development and Refurbishment Investment Tax Credit Scheme. The objective is to unlock funding from the private sector to critical road infrastructure in the country. The executive order was designed to empower private companies to finance construction or refurbishment of federal roads designated as eligible roads under the scheme and recoup their investments through deduction of the approved total costs expended on the project from their annual company's income tax. As Nigerians uh, continue the countdown to the February 25th presidential elections, Governor of Ebony State, Mr. Dave Umai, has expressed confidence and in the ability and competence of the presidential candidate 
of the All Progressive Congress, Ashiwa Jibola Tinibu, to tackle the country's microeconomic challenges head on. I'm speaking in an exclusive interview with TVC News at the meeting put together by the APC presidential flag bearer with organized private sector under the aegis of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group in Lagos. Mr. Omai highlights uh, Mr. Tinibu's policies that will tackle inflation, petrol subsidy, and monetary policy. Consistently and of course uh, today, I saw a man who is ready, very experienced, you know, for the task. A man who uh, is not into theoretical economy, a man who has done it before, a man who is not sentimental, a man who knows how to choose a team, you know, to deliver. So I, you know, um, said it before and uh, in London it was demonstrated, here it was demonstrated. And of course, we have to also believe you know, on the practicality of uh, a man who has got solutions to a problem because he did it before and is going to do it but again. And uh, again, I must always tell Nigerians, you know, don't believe in, uh, you know, uh, politicians and their promises. Believe on a man who has done it before, who has struck record, you know, a man who has, uh, you know, set a stage, you know, for the revolution of uh, Lagos State. And I think that he that is faithful in a little will be faithful in much, you know, also. Uh, I, I also came from the private sector background and, um, you know, what happened in Lagos is what is happening in Ebony State. So I'm very proud to work with him. There you go, Mr. Dave Umai, Governor of Ebony State. Let's turn our attention now to global markets. Asian stock markets struggle to make headway today after weak U.S. consumer data Stocks recession worries and uh, notched investors towards uh, safe assets such as bonds, while Japan's yen rose as markets doubted the Bank of Japan's policy commitment. MSCI's Brodex Index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan fell at 0.2%. European futures and FTSE futures fell at 0.5%. Japan's decay dropped at 1.4% and the yen rose about 0.7% to 127.95 per dollar. And went in sharp moves that followed the BOJ leaving monetary policy certain unchanged a day earlier. But the S&P 500 futures also dropped at 0.2% in Asia and were close to breaking below the 50-day moving average. Now away from global markets, Federal Reserve policymakers have signaled to push on with more interest rate hikes above 5%, even as inflation shows signs of having peaked and economic activities in slowing. Although Fed's benchmark lending rate currently sits in a range of 4.25% to 4.50%, but a Cleveland Fed president, Ms. Loretta Mester, says there is a need to keep going as much as how much to do will be discussed at the proposed meeting scheduled for later in the month. Uh, investors expect the Fed to lift the rates by a quarter of a percentage point at the end of its January 31st to February 1st meeting. This is the second straight monthly decline in U.S. retail sales, a slowdown in producer price inflation to 6.2% in the 12 months ended in December and a drop in manufacturing output. However, Ms. Mester adds that the Fed's policy rate will likely go a bit higher than 5% to 5.25% range. And Amazon Incorporated will cut some jobs in the United States, Canada, and Costa Rica, as part of its plan to lay off 18,000 employees, the U.S. technology sector is cutting down workforce and slashing costs to reverse pandemic-era excesses and prepare for a worsening global economy. According to the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification site, the company is terminating 2,300 employees in Seattle and Belouv. Amazon Incorporated Chief Executive Mr. Andy Jassy says about 6% of the company's employee would be affected by the SAC. Let's wrap things off now with crude oil prices on the international market as it fell nearly by $1 today, extending losses from the previous day as a surprise jump in U.S. crude stocks weighed on the market, along with fears of a recession that were heightened by disappointing U.S. retail sales and data output. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude fell today to sell at $78.00, and five six cents per barrel with a price decline of 1.16 percent. Brinket futures also experienced a downward price margin of 0.93 percent to sell at 84 dollars and 19 cents per barrel. Bonalite sells at 87 dollars and 78 cents per barrel with an up 
with price review of 2.11%. And for the OPEC basket, crude oil dealers are offering $83.30 per barrel with an upward price review of 1.28%.